When is the best time for landscape photography? This is a question many people ask, and you've probably heard many of these answers. Golden hour, late evening, depends on the weather and conditions. Don't go out in the midday sun. Well, all of those are very true. But the real answer is it depends very much on the kind of photo that you are trying to get and the conditions. It's now three o'clock in the afternoon, right at the end of June, high summer. And to many people, they may say, oh, that's the wrong time to be out doing landscape photography. But as you're about to see, it's perfect given the conditions and the kind of photo that I want to get. Although it may be three o'clock in the afternoon, and to some, they may say that this is way too early to be out doing landscape photography. But when you've got conditions like this, patchy broken cloud, some of it very dark, and very thick, that cloud diffuses the light and makes the conditions absolutely perfect for this kind of photography. Now the problem with ordinarily shooting in the afternoon is that the light is too harsh and yeah when there's no clouds and the sun is bright and the sun is strong then the light is really harsh. But when you've got lots of clouds around moving, diffusing the light, casting patchy light across the landscape, light and shadow, then these are all the ingredients for a perfect afternoon's landscape photography. As you can see now, I've just shown you what this sky looks like. And the, cloud, the sun now is just breaking out of the cloud and lighting all this golden wheat grass here. Now there's still shadow up there, of course, but you can see now how now, now the clouds are moving and now the light is fading on the foreground here and it may well move up there. Now the light is moving, it's patchy, and that's really, really great for landscape photography. Now the other thing about coming out at this time of day is when you want to get an image of those lovely white puffy clouds, the, the kind that look like they've been washed using Purcell, and those lovely gorgeous blue skies. If you want to get these kinds of pictures, then you don't want to come at the golden hour, because if you come at the golden hour, you're going to get golden light, golden pictures. The landscape will be bathed in this golden glow, which is lovely, of course it is. But as I say, that depends on what you want. If you want lovely lush green colors, if you want pure white, white, white clouds as pure as the driven snow, and if you want those lovely deep blue skies, then this is the time to come out when the sun is higher. When the sun is lower, the color temperature is much warmer. So that's not what we want. We want to come out now when the sun is a bit higher in the sky. Now, the other thing about photographing clouds, when you've got patchy clouds and patchy blue sky, you want to get that definition in the clouds. And the way to do that is simply to shoot at this time of day. Now, the thing about photography and the thing about photographing scene is it's all down to the angle of the light. And when the sun is low, then when you're shooting a scene like this and the sun is much lower in the sky over there, then the light is more, uh, basically the clouds are being lit straight on. And when you light something straight on, then you don't get all of the definition because it's the shadows that give shape and definition to an object. If you look at these two pictures I'm going to put up now of the moon, the first one is when the moon is full. And when the moon is full, the light is being shone on the moon directly from the front. The sun is basically facing the moon. And you'll see in this picture that there's, the moon is almost two dimensional, that there's no definition. Now, if we look at this picture here, this is shot when the moon wasn't full. And in this situation, the moon the, the sun is not directly opposite the moon, the sun is off to the side. So the light is falling from the side. 
So it's then casting the shadows, which is then bringing out all the shape and texture of the moon. Now you can see all the craters on the moon and everything. And that's because of the angle of the light. And it's very much the same with the clouds. If you want to get those lovely white clouds, but if you want to get all that shape and definition and texture in the cloud, then you want the sun to be higher so the clouds are being lit from above and not directly onwards. And that can only be done earlier in the day, sort of midday or mid-afternoon around about now. Three o'clock is a perfect time. The sun, the sun is right up there. Yeah? And the, the clouds, when they do come and appear over there, will be lit from above. And then we'll see beautiful, lovely textured clouds against a beautiful deep blue sky and hopefully some nice soft diffused light falling on that church and some lovely light falling here on this golden wheat, wheat grass field. So I've got my composition set up. I've included a lot of the foreground grass here and I've got that, that twisty little road in the edge of the composition there. I've got the church almost in the middle and a nice amount of sky there and hopefully at the moment there's no clouds there but hopefully some of these clouds are going to move in the right direction fingers crossed and give me some lovely cloud over that church there i'm i'm set up on a f16 and i'm focused here on the foreground grass because i'm quite close to it so you always want to focus on the closest object so i'm far far, far enough away that i can pretty much focus a third of the way into my scene to maximize my depth of field and i've set f16 and uh, I've got a case polarizer on there. So the polarizer is really great. I can use that to darken that blue sky a bit. And that will really also help to bring out the definition of those clouds when they, when they drift over. Now, it's a little bit breezy. So I'm kind of hoping that maybe I can get a slightly slower shutter speed and get some soft movement in that foreground there, in that grass. So if need be, maybe I'll uh, put a neutral density filter on there to stop down the light. We'll see. But there's no clouds there at the moment, so now it's a waiting game. Well, as uh, life would have it, there's cloud all over here. Lovely thick cloud, lovely thick, beautiful cloud up here. Uh, but nothing, nothing over there, nothing above the church and nothing in my composition. But still, that's with landscape photography. It's a waiting game. Well, actually, it's a waiting and hoping game. Well, there is hope in the sky above. but it does seem to be breaking up. The problem is often that cloud looks like it's going to drift off over, but as it gets closer, it breaks up and dissipates. Must be something about that church which makes the cloud decide it doesn't want to go there. And there you go, it's broken up. Some of it now is drifting off this way, still nothing over the church, but did get a nice moment, a very nice moment, although there was no cloud there. There was some lovely light fell on that hillside over there and on the church and on some of those trees. So uh, I managed to crack off one, one shot. I'll stick that up there now. The cloud over here starting to really thicken. I think I just saw a flash of lightning over there. Well, there does seem to be some cloud coming now, but now this thick storm cloud has moved right over and it's completely obstructing any light whatsoever. So, oh. I'll come back out if this storm passes over. Well, I finally got my clouds. 
Unfortunately, it's not, no longer three in the afternoon. It's something like five o'clock now. As you saw earlier, that storm was approaching and the clouds got really thick. And so uh, I quickly packed up and ran for shelter. And it, it rained a bit, not too much. We were, basically, we were on the edge of the storm, but the storm did come and now it's actually moved away. And now is the best part, the after storm light. Now everything's broken up. The sun is still pretty high in the sky because it's uh, end of June. So although it's five o'clock, the sun is still pretty high in the sky. But the result now is we've got the whole scene is bathed in beautiful, beautiful light. And uh, those clouds behind the church are really, really nice. I'd like them to break a little bit to, to reveal some of the blue in between. But at the moment, it's still really nice, really, really nice. Now I'm set, I've still got my aperture at f16 and I've set my ISO at 100 to try and get the lowest shutter speed I can. I've got 1 30th of a second. Now it's not that slow. So I might get a slight bit of movement in the grass. It is still blowing a little bit, but um, that's the slowest I'm gonna get unless I put an ND filter on. But I'm not gonna bother with that right now, I don't think. I might try it in a little bit, but I'll wait and see what happens with the clouds first. The clouds are moving nicely, so hopefully some of it will break up. Now I'm shooting on aperture priority. I'm not shooting on full manual. Oh, gasps, I hear. You've probably heard many people say that uh, uh, if you're, a pro you're only a professional photographer if you use full manual. Well, that's to coin a phrase, utter cod's wallop. You're a true professional photographer if you know when to use full manual and when not to use full manual. And this is a time when you shouldn't use full manual. For the simple reason is there's lots of clouds moving, the light is changing, and the light is changing all the time. And if you use full manual, then you're constantly gonna to have to be fiddling around with your exposure each time the light changes. And now I've got some lovely white cloud. And just as I said earlier, when the sun is up high and it's not so late in the day, those white clouds are really, really white. We've got some lovely shadow on there, so we've given it lots of texture as well. And the fact that it's lit from above is really bringing out the definition and separation from the blue sky behind. And the polarizer also helps to do that. By using the polarizer to darken down those blue skies, So you can see here when I turn the polarization off, the sky looks kind of a pale blue, which it, which it does actually now too. But by rotating the polarizer, we can darken that blue sky and then really bring out the separation between the blue sky and those clouds. And that really then adds to the definition of that sky and those clouds. It's really, really fantastic, beautiful. You're getting some lovely shapes and textures now in, in the sky and those clouds. And that's why in landscape photography, clouds really make a scene. When you've got a blue sky with no clouds, it's pretty featureless. But the clouds really add to it. And as the clouds move and change, they create these wonderful, wonderfully interesting shapes. And you can use that shape in your composition. I often vary my composition according to what's happening in the sky. So sometimes I'll pull out a little bit if there's a bit of interesting cloud over there and over there, and I'll capture a slightly different image. So your composition can change quite often depending on what's happening in the sky. You've got a base composition, a general idea, but sometimes you might want to pull back or zoom in a bit depending on what's actually happening in the sky itself. Composition is a fine thing. Sometimes, that's why I say, when the clouds are moving like that, and sometimes you need to tweak 
your composition. Now I've moved this over nicely now so I've got all of that interesting cloud. The cloud from the left of the church there, that bit of cloud going over the church and going all the way over to the far end. And I've got a nice bit of grass down there in the edge of my composition. I'm focusing on that little white flower there and as that cloud, lovely white bit of cloud goes behind that church fire, I crack off my shot. Now in some cases you need to vary the exposure compensation and in this case I've dialed my exposure compensation up one third of a stop. So I've got plus one third of a stop and that's giving me the perfect exposure and the perfect histogram. Lovely. So there you go. Who needs to come out in the golden hour? Well, you come out in the golden hour if you want golden light and golden images. If you want lovely puffy white clouds with lots of uh, definition and texture and detail, come out earlier in the day when the sun is higher in the sky and the church and, and the clouds, sorry, are lit from above. When there's lots of lots of cloud around, the sun is not so harsh. And after the rain and the storm, the light, uh, the scene itself is very clear. It's nothing like a good storm to clear, clear the air itself. So I hope you found that useful. And as always, if you did, please give this video a like. Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you're new to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. And thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye bye.